Okay. Well, we do still have people logging in, but welcome everyone to this month's capacity building webinar series. This is a very special webinar. Uh, and we are excited to have Lori Jacob with, with us tonight, offering this with a special presenter at a special time, uh, the I'm a good board member, aren't I? So um, I know we have some staff, but a really good, um, you know, the, the majority of our participants tonight are board members, so that's great. Um, we are gonna go for 90 minutes tonight. Um, uh, the webinar is recorded and will be available later online. I know some of our, uh, uh, so, Lori, we can see. Yep. Okay. Yep. Great. All right, just making sure you need that. Just making sure I have all the documents, <laughs> yep, for all the people here. That's, okay, what, that's what's our, going here. Yeah, some of our affiliates then have used the recording, so maybe some of their board members or their executive director were able to participate live, but then we can also listen to parts of the recording and share that with your board members later. Um, so just make sure you know you can be listening through your computer speakers. Uh, you might have a headset. You can also access the audio by phone using the number provided in the control panel. So it looks like from our from my end of things, everybody is connected to audio, but just know that uh, everyone right now is muted for sound. Um, there is a little hand that you can uh, raise in your control panel that will let us know that you are interested in talking to us. Um, but you can also use the questions panel to type comments and questions throughout the webinar. Uh, Lori, do you have a preference of, of whether or not? Yeah, and, on, on and I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll go over that in just a moment once you're all, okay. all finished. So yeah, you're, you're doing great. Oh, that's great. I, that's, I just wanted to make sure we covered that. And then I think I can just hand over and, and just again, welcome Lori Jacob with our fantastic presenter today. Well, thank you. Hello, everybody. I know we're in Minnesota, and I know that it's kind of chilly, so would you do me a favor? There's uh, quite a few of you on. Would you type into the question box, which is where we'll talk to each other regularly, type into the question box uh, what your temperature is, if you know it, and even though I've got the list in front of me, just remind me if you are a board member or staff. So temperature, because it'll just get it out of the way. We can be done with talking about the temperature. And whether you are board member or staff or other volunteers. So if you use the question box, that will come directly to me. I can see that. <laughs> Bridget says 16 degrees, but it feels like zero. I'm thinking it feels like, like 20 below zero, Bridget. But yes, I, I get it. Anyone else? Who else is with us? All right. We've got Pat. We've got Tina. Windy and cold, blizzard coming. Yep, that's that's us. That's Minnesota. And Cookie, are you a staff person or board? All right, I'm going to watch for a few more names to come in, and uh, then we will go ahead and get started. I want to not dilly dally too long. Everybody who's here, if you would, just type in the the temperature where you are, or the the weather conditions, and whether you are staff or if you are board member. And let's begin, have you, and yes, you've got recording going, all right. So we have a, a slide deck that April sent you ahead of time along with one worksheet. And that worksheet uh, hopefully will guide you through some of the questions that I'll be asking you. So just hang on to that, keep it handy. We'll, we'll bring it up in a couple of minutes here. Uh, but I want to make sure that uh, you know the slide deck is not in the link that you're seeing on the screen right now. I use the box that you're going to for uh, additional documents. I use that actually for lots and lots of organizations, so the slide deck for this session is not in there. Uh, but you've got them hopefully in hand and you can get them from April when you need them. I'm here in the Twin Cities, master storyteller, trainer, and coach. I've spent a lot of time in the social profit arena. I have helped organizations raise lots of money, many, many millions of dollars from individual donors. And I love working with boards. I love working with staff. And I love helping to figure out 
how do you do your work in such a way that you raise as much money as possible? My mission is that you raise lots of money. That's my mission for you. But my vision for you is that you get to do that with some ease and some joy. Uh, and you get to have some fun with it. So that's where we're headed, is to uh, talk about what is your board makeup? What do you look like? How do you engage together? How much fun do you have? Um, what challenges, if any, uh, do you have as a board or staff? And um, my hope is by the end of the session, you'll all be jumping for joy and uh, cheering and, and looking happy, just like, just like here on the screen. All right, so jumping ahead, uh, I want to make sure that uh, you know where we're headed. I want to talk a little bit about how to be clear about what the expectations are for all aspects of being a board member. What are some things that can make an awesome board member? Looks like there's a typo there. Sorry about that. What are ways the board can be involved and not have to ask for money? So how can you support Habitat for Humanity and not have to ask for money and still feel like you're doing a great job? We'll talk a little bit about recruitment and board orientation. We'll talk about the money story, what I call the money gap or the funding gap. But it's your money story, some measurement, visual displays. I've got a pop quiz for you to make sure you're awake through the whole session. And then I want to just talk a little tiny bit about what do you see now? Assessing your own communication right now before we leave the call. So before I move ahead with this definition, uh, if you would, if you've just joined us, go ahead and type into the, uh, the question box your uh, title. Are you a board member or are you staff? And what's your temperature? I'm looking to see who's got the coldest temperature uh, around the state. Looks like Tom has his hand raised. I'm assuming, April, you'll, you'll take care of Tom unless there's something that he wants to know from me. Okay, so how many of you have been affiliated with your uh, organization, your Habitat affiliate, for more than, actually just type in, how many years have you been affiliated with Habitat for Humanity? Just type into the question box, how many years has it been? Hi, Parker, I'm just seeing you come in. Just over a year, 12 years, 8 months, we've got some newbies, we've got some medium, so 6 years, 12 years, 12 years, uh, 2 years, 17 years, so we're kind of all over the board, no pun intended there. Less than one, so we've got a handful of you, about 4 or 5 of you who are, are pretty new to your affiliate. Um, some of you, it looks like, are board members. Some of you are staff in those new capacities, so that's helpful for me to know as well. I, I like to define a couple of words when I do these sessions. Uh, the first is that, that pesky definition of fundraising. Just a uh, clear definition is raising money. This is the raising of assets and resources from the community to support your affiliate. It's the part that people really don't love. There are, there are probably a handful of us on this call who actually enjoy asking people to give their time, their talent, their stuff, or their money. Or you might like to give some things in uh, varying degrees. Certainly money often falls to the bottom of the list for a lot of people. The, uh, the term development I like to define because sometimes it, uh, it brings a sense of calm to board work. And uh, the, term de the, the definition of development is the process your organization goes through to increase public understanding of your mission. And then when people know what you do, it's easier to acquire financial support for your programs. So in talking about boards, it, just type into the, the box here, how many of you, uh, what, what challenges do you have, if any, with the current board that you have? Are they all doing great or do we have some challenges? And this is the time when I don't say names out loud. I'll just tell what the challenges are. So some of you have too few board members. How? What else? We've got, uh, they don't all know what they're doing. Okay. What else? What challenges do you have, if any? Too little involvement. They're not all giving of their time or their dollars. We'd like to have more board members, got it. Uh, having committees so the board can devote itself to higher level matters. So organizing in smaller groups, got it. 
what else? Any other challenges that you have, especially those of you who are with us who are board members? I'm interested in what Chris is thinking or Linda or Mark, any of the board members who are on. Yeah. Lori, I was trying to help Tom with his, his hand raising and um, but he yep. did respond in the chat section then about board engagement. So Tom, if you can put that in the question spot or not, res not respond to me, that would be great. But, great. Yeah, the chat box is that. for you and for you in April. Yep. The yep. chat box is for you in April to talk. The question box is for you and me to talk. Too few don't understand um, the true goals of our affiliate. Um, just finding board members. We want more committee members. Our board is small and burned out. The same people don't want to give up any authority to new members. Interesting. Okay. Ooh, you've got some good juicy challenges, folks. All right. Love it. We'll dump them all out here on the table so we can work through them, talk through them. What I have for you are some tools, some conversation here tonight, and uh, some thinking outside the box on what it is your board is doing, how they're doing it, and what conversations are happening at the board and the staff level so that you can have the best board possible. If you would, type into the question box after you fill in your worksheet. So you've hopefully got this worksheet in front of you. And this was one of the documents that came with the slide deck. I bring the following talents. You want to list up to two talents. You can, you can do more if you've got them. But just list uh, a couple of talents. And once you've written those down on your worksheet, if you would, just type them into the question box so I can read off what wisdom and strength and uh, superhuman powers we have here. Excellent writing skills. Got it. Others of you have connections in the community. What else? What other what are some talents that you have? Just type them into the question box. Public speaking skills. Yeah, I'm 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 willing to dive in and do just about anything. A couple of you, few of you have good speaking abilities. Quantitative skills, so measurement, able to see what the measurements are. Organizational skills, energy. I, I love people. I love to write, especially grant proposals. I am committed to the mission. I have patience. I've got some human relations skills. We work in the social profit arena. We absolutely have to have both of those, patience and some human relations skills. All right. So how many of you have ever asked your board this question? What are the, what are the talents that they bring to the table? We've got some more talents coming in, finance skills and organization structure. So just type into the question box. I'm going to, we'll be really interactive, so stay close to your keyboard, folks. How often or have you ever asked your board uh, these types of, of questions so that you know what they think their talents and skills are? We've got some more talents and skills, context, construction background, finance skills, well known in my community. Uh, motivational speaker, uh, good referral resource, recruiter, work well with people, uh, comfortable with and skilled at talking about our program and our mission. Uh, some of you are saying, I don't think we've ever asked our board this question. What talents do you bring? How about the rest of you? There are quite a few of you on the call. So how many of you have asked this question? This is a question on our board application. Great. Perfect. So you've added that into the mix. We haven't asked this question at ours. We haven't asked this question uh, outright. It comes up when dividing into committee duties. It's nice, though, Greg, to actually have a board member define it. Uh, Pat says we haven't asked it since I've been here. Uh, it's on our application. And then what do you do with it once it's on the application? So that's one of the things to be thinking about. If we're gathering data, what is it that we're doing with it? OK, so let's move on. I'm going to read through a list of uh, the responsibilities that I believe board members must have or at least we expect them to have when they walk through the door and they become a board member for us. The list is intended to be a bit daunting and I'm going to read it fast to create an even more daunting experience for you. All right. 
So we expect our board members to determine our organization's mission and purpose if that's not clear, um, engage in strategic thinking and planning, approve and monitor our work, ensure adequate financial resources through their oversight and or their engagement, provide effective fiscal oversight, ensure sound risk management policies, select and support the CEO and review their performance, enhance our public image, carefully select and orient new board members and board leaders, maintain board structure and operations, and organize participate and participate on committees and task forces. Okay, I'll take a breath. So the list is intended to have you really think about, wow, do we talk about all of those things when a board member comes to uh, serve on our board? Do we make sure that we do some training in those areas? Do we make sure that board members understand what level of engagement we're looking for at each of those areas? So on your worksheet, bring up your worksheet again and just circle yes or no in that area of governance. Our organization provides training and support so board members can be helpful in all of the following areas of governance. And I just read through that list for you, so yes, no, yes, no, just fill them out. And then what I'd like you to do is type into the question box how many yeses and how many noes. Just add up your total so I know where you're at with your yeses and your noes. So what are the total numbers of yeses in that you do provide training and you provide support so that all board members can be really clear about what their role is and how to do it. And go ahead and type your numbers into the question box. While I'm waiting for your numbers, I'm going to go to the next slide. What people are looking for is uh, something they're not going to tell you. Uh, and these are things they just sort of carry around with them. They're looking to be noticed, maybe liked just a little bit. Uh, they're looking to be inspired, moved, touched by the work that they're doing in addition to the work your organization is doing. They want you to do what they, they say. If you ask for their opinion, they, they're looking for you to do what they say. And if they don't show up at something or they're gone off the board or they're gone off that committee or they're gone from the office, miss me a little bit if I'm gone. So type into the question box, how many yeses and how many noes did you get when you were typing in or when you were answering those questions? So this list of what people are looking for, this is intended to have you think about, as a board member, how much do we do as staff or board leadership to have folks feel noticed, liked, inspired? Uh, do we listen to what they say? And if we can't do what they're asking, how do we explain to them that we can't? Uh, and, and does someone call them if they miss a board meeting? Or does someone call them if they are uh, you know, not around at that event that we thought everybody was going to be at? OK, let's look at the numbers here. We've got, um, it looks like six no's and four yeses. We've got uh, some different numbers adding up here. I'm going to say two yeses and five no's there, seven and three, nine and one, nine yeses. Nice job, Linda. Interesting. Good for you. So I'll, I'll look forward to hearing as we unfold this session, how deep are you going in those training areas and do you feel like um, the work that you do as a board member and a board leader is really engaging folks because it, it looks to me just from your answer that you're providing some good information when I would join your board. What are the characteristics of a good board member? This one takes a little bit of thought and you don't need to write this on your sheet of paper. I just want to see you write this in the question box. What are the characteristics of a good board member? What are the things that you know you do as a board member, what are the things if your staff that you see some of your board doing and you really are loving that some of your board members are, are being like that, they're doing those sorts of things. So if you would, type into your question box whatever your short list or your longer list is. And while I'm waiting for you to be typing, I'll just remind you that there's a secret to an effective board, an effective staff, 
an effective home life, an effective experience with your puppy or your, your cat or your bird or your children or whomever it is, and it's pretty simple. It's about communication. And it's like real estate. Real estate is location, location, location. Effective relationships, especially an effective board, is about communication, communication, communication. All right, so let me read out some things that we've got here. Uh, board, uh, a good board member, characteristic of a good board member, they understand the distinction between governance and operations. Good, and that's a, that's a challenging one for some folks to understand. They have a passion for our programs. They're willing to help. They're engaged on committees, and they provide support to the staff, uh, especially if you have a tiny staff. They participate and um, they're, they have dedication, they have loyalty, they're a good time manager, they take initiative on things, they have a positive attitude, love that, and they have great attendance at meetings and events. They review the information supplied in the board packet, love it, thank you Renee. They're dependable, they volunteer outside board meetings, they, they attend our builds, our fundraising events, they speak at engagements. Uh, are, they have an ability to plan years into the future and they're good on their follow-through. They do what they say. So I've got an article that uh, I'm going to quote just for a moment here and it was written by a man named Brad Feld. He talks about what makes an awesome board member and there are just five things he lists. They're pretty uh, quick and straightforward. Um, the top five any, anyway are what I'll cover here. Uh, but he's a, a corporate person and um, what I believe is, and he says in his piece, that everything that he's talking about is really appropriate for whether you're in a nonprofit board or a for-profit company. And I would agree with him. The first is that uh, what makes an awesome board member is they're prepared. They keep commitments. They show up at all the meetings that we have. They show up on time. They don't leave early. They do their homework. They're fully present. They don't do their email while they're at the meetings. They speak their minds, so they don't have a fear of bringing up an uncomfortable topic during the meeting, even if it impacts someone in the room. They do it in a respectful way. They don't come up to you after the meeting and pull on your sleeve and say, hey, we should have done this, or gosh, I think that was a really stupid idea, or why did we have that vote? They actually do that. That's part of their job as, uh, as we were describing governance. Their job is to govern, oversee the organization and bring up the opposite view if that's important. Uh, they build independent relationships, not just uh, with donors outside the doors of the organization. They build independent relationships between themselves, between themselves and the staff. They actually want to know who the staff is. They call and visit them. They ask them questions. Um, if you're a small, small staff, part of what they would do is just ask, you know, what is there that needs to be done? Is there anything I can help with today? Uh, they are resource rich. And I don't mean necessarily they have lots of money, though that's just fine if they do. Um, what, what Brad talks about is uh, he's, he's had directors who are just about one thing. They have one sort of broken record bit of advice that they give over and over again. And after a third or fourth meeting with them attending, they just don't have anything else to say. So great board members pull from their own years of experience and they adapt their experience to your situation. They are flexible, they, they're dynamic, they, they, they have conversations that are about how the organization can move forward with the resources sitting around the board table. They're strategically engaged and operationally distant. This is what you were mentioning earlier, Parker. This is uh, going to vary you know, by size of organization and the needs of your own team. So if you've got a teeny tiny staff, there are some operational things that you probably will have board members helping with. But as you grow and as you have really solid staff leadership, being a governing board and understanding the difference between making decisions that are strategic long term uh, over all the organization versus how many uh, how many balloons should we have at that event or what color should the invitations be or what day of the week should we have the fundraiser on those are things for staff to decide uh, the, the strategic vision of someone is important to uh, explain at the onset of them joining your board alright so now I want you to rank yourself 
whether you're a staff person or a board member, doesn't matter to me. If you're a board member or a, a volunteer in some other capacity, I'd like you to go to the bottom part of this page one and rank yourself in the following five areas, those areas I just read. I'm prepared and I keep commitments. One is not so good. Five is great. I speak my mind respectfully and clearly. One is not so good and five is great. I help build independent relationships for my organization. I'm resource rich. If you think you're not, go to the top. Go to your talent list and uh, take a look. What did you write down there? Of course you're resource rich. And then number five, I'm strategically engaged but operationally distant. Once you've answered the question and marked the ones through five, your answer, uh, I don't need to know your specifics, but here's what I'd like you to chat with me about. Just type into the, the question box, what would your board say about themselves if they had to answer those questions about themselves? How uh, diverse, how clear, how, how many board members would tell the truth about themselves and say, well, shoot, I don't show up to very many meetings. Would they be honest? Would they not answer the questions? Tell me just what would the feedback be if you as staff or board brought that questionnaire to a board meeting and had them fill it out after you explained the, um, the five different areas and even maybe had them read the article? What, what would you have, what would they say? So if you would type into the question box, I'll wait for some type-ins to show up. And while we're doing that, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, uh, the, the next page is a, a board assessment, a san an annual self-assessment. It's one of the things I recommend that we as staff help the board to do is uh, find out what questions they could be asking themselves once a year. Will those, which questions will actually cause them to know where there are some holes, um, to know where their strengths are, to know where they might need to back off or, or deepen their relationship, and to know as a whole how they're doing. So questions are things like, how confident are you that most or all board members are adequately knowledgeable about our programs? You get to answer yes or no. How confident are you that most or all board members follow through on commitments they make as board members? I recommend you do take a self-assessment survey like this at least once a year. Uh, review it in the governance committee if you have one or the executive committee if you don't have a governance committee. Um, tally it up, bring the results anonymously to the next board meeting and talk a bit about it. Uh, have then some conversation about how will we move uh, some of the no's to yeses and what are the comments that people are sharing with us that can have us build a better board experience. All right, so Greg says I think they would be, in, in answers to the questions, um, they would be high in a couple of areas and, and gradually lower. Um, Bridget says I think some would rank themselves higher than you might. Um, Bev says I, we have good people. I'm not every, all of your board members are good. That's not the question. The question is how might they rank themselves in the answers to those questions, Bev? That's, that's what I'm looking for. As all the people who serve on every single one of your boards are good people. That's, that's not even an issue. I know, I know that. Um, let's see, Linda said they would be willing to dig in and really do this questionnaire. Um, our board is open and honest and they're willing to try new ideas. Um, Overall, some threes, um, some might have some uh, numbers that are, are a little higher, uh, more on the yes, they'll speak their mind range. High on commitment and honest speaking and low still on strategic uh, rather than uh, operational functioning, got it. So governance versus operations is a continuing issue. Um, they'd enter, many of our group would answer very honestly and be willing to do it. Perfect, love it. All right, thanks for the feedback. I would encourage you to do um, some of incorporate some of these questions over the course of different board meetings. You know, talking a little bit about what are our talents, um, what ranking would I give myself in these five areas, and do a self-assessment. But it means then we have to be ready and prepared for the discussion and facilitating the discussion that comes out of doing those sorts of exercises. So when you think about what exactly you want from your board members, 
uh, and you don't have to tell me this, but just you know, ponder it for a moment. How do you provide clear direction? Some of you have a board agreement. You have some engagement forms that you use or documents that you use. Others might have that discussion in the orientation process or in the application process. Some of you uh, might have board members who've been around for quite a while, and um, there's there's not really any discussion that happens about the expectations because we've been here so long we know um, but then that leaves a bit of a void for the new folks so being a GPS board leadership and uh, staff our job really is to be the GPS to let our board know that uh, everyone's job in our organization is to be raising awareness talking about our organization sharing how, th how much things cost sharing what our goals are being a really active ambassador an advocate of the organization. Now some of you know the answers to this uh, next question so I'm not going to have you answer it right in the, the question box but what I will do is just have you think about what's missing from my list. What are some ways the board can be involved in fund development and not have to ask for money? I'll take you through my list first and then I'll pause and just see where you want to add to the list. First and most important in my mind is to make their own personal financial gift. It's important to organizations that are funding you, companies, other individuals, foundations, that if they're going to consider a gift to your organization, they want to know that your board is actually making that same in investment in your work. There's no, um, I, I don't believe in dictating how much anyone gives ever. I just ask that all board members do give at whatever their capacity is. Another way to participate in development is to invite people to do something like come and uh, attend a meeting or come to an event or give some advice. Many folks find it's a lot easier to ask someone for their time or their talent uh, rather than making a, a, to make a financial contribution, which is just fine. I actually don't believe that board members need to nor should ask for money, especially if they don't want to. Um, asking people to do something they don't want to do is, is isn't just not a good idea. Uh, we we want to make sure that we're having people do what they want to do given their talents, their time, availability, but we want to spell out clearly what some of the expectations are and what some of the requirements are for tasks to be done at the organization. Acting as an ambassador and an advocate, uh, this to me is one of the places where we have a lot of missed opportunities. When a board member attends an event, hopefully you have uh, special name tags for your board, even if it's a paper name tag that they're wearing, um, so that they can stand out in the crowd just a little bit. But one of the ways to actively be a, a, an ambassador is to ask the staff to let them know names of two people uh, that are at the event, two different names for each one of us, people who are donors or volunteers, people who've given something to our organization. So it might be at your house blessing, it might be at a groundbreaking, it might be at the annual meeting, it might be at the golf tournament, but each of us as board members is assigned a couple of names of people and we go around and introduce ourselves looking for, we're on a scavenger hunt if you will, to find Carol and Cookie and uh, Pat and Bev and the board members that are here at the event so that we can thank them and we can let them know that we really appreciate uh, their donation of time, talent, stuff, or money. So we're all, now we're seeing them, which is one of the things people are looking to have happen. We're acknowledging them one more time, even if they've gotten a thank you letter or something like that. And we have an opportunity to ask them a question. How did you come to be here today? What is it about our organization that uh, inspires you or causes you to want to participate with us? Fundraising is about relatedness, deep, profound relatedness. And the, the truth is, uh, sometimes we forget the building of the relationship part. We expect the staff to do the asking, send out the letter, send out the email appeal, plan a good give to the max day. And what we forget is our part in helping ensure that our donors and our volunteers are seen and connected and thanked on a regular basis. 
Another way to participate in development is to thank recent happy donors. Making thank you calls, a peer-to-peer -peer thank you call, is hugely powerful. And a couple of years ago, some of you have heard me talk about this for a number of years, um, Penelope Burke, uh, a woman who is a researcher, and she's written a book called Donor-Centered Fundraising. She, um, she talked in that book in 2010 about the importance of the uh, timing of thanking, uh, the, the sooner the better. Uh, thanking quickly is critical. People will notice uh, if a thank you letter comes a month later and they won't even remember that they gave the gift and they'll think, wow, that took a while. Uh, but also the fact that a peer is making a phone call to them has a huge value over a staff person making that phone call. When a board member makes a thank you call to first time donors, the second gift by that first time donor is 39% higher. Now that's a pretty significant amount difference. So I'd ask you, is it worth getting your board excited to make thank you calls to raise 39% more dollars and create more loyal donors? So how this often works when I'm working with an organization is uh, I ask that if we are having a board meeting, part of the five minutes, part, taking five minutes from whatever time I would be with, you know, working with the board that night, we all make at least one or two if we have a lot of contributions that are recent. Uh, we make one or two phone calls on our cell phones, leave messages for people, or invariably somebody that's there gets a real person on the line and they get to say thank you to a real person and they come back and you know when we ask the room to, to report out and tell how did the calls go that one person is saying wow you should you should hear what people are saying about us you should hear what I heard from this donor uh, it it connects it the, those phone calls do two things they are what I call a passion retread moment for the board member. The board member remembers why they're doing this work. They're building in their own sense of deeper loyalty and you're seeing your donors and creating a deeper, more meaningful relationship with your supporters. Now the bad news about donors contributions is over the past seven years contributions have dropped significantly or retention rate has dropped significantly. So even if you're generating lots of new donors each year, 39% are what you're keeping. It used to be in the 50 to 60 range, 50 to 60% of your donors would stick around. It's now below 40%. So this next statistic, when a board member makes a thank you call to a peer, to another donor, two years later, 70% of those people are still giving. So what if you could increase your retention rate by 30% by just making a thank you call. That's the only difference that happened for people in the study that Penelope did a few years ago. So how many of you already make phone calls? I know some of you do. How many of you have board members who make thank you calls? Just type a yes or no into the question box if you would. We've got some yeses, not yet, some noes. Love it that you do that, that some of you are. So Cookie and Bev, when those calls are made, um, do people enjoy them? Are they, are they going pretty quickly? And you know, it doesn't take a lot of time to do that. How about you, June? When, when folks are making calls, when your board is making calls, is it an enjoyable experience or is it, do you have to arm twist to get people to do them? Absolutely enjoyable. Okay, good. That, that They're usually, what I say, they're usually the best calls you'll ever make. They're easy because if you say right off the bat, hi, I'm Bev and I'm on the board of Habitat for Humanity and you are one of our donors and I got the honor to call you tonight. I'm just so grateful that you support us and I wanted to say thank you. And that's it. People are sort of shocked and they almost fall off their chairs because they're looking for something else. Uh, June says some work at it, some avoid personally. I personally do it and enjoy it. I love it. And you know, I, I would even have the people who avoid it have to make one phone call one time. Um, it would have them know that that work is really something that is uh, time sensitive for one, especially after you have a big event. Uh, and if they, if you could set it up so that uh, they got to call someone who was at their desk or was home that evening 
and you set it up that they were calling a very uh, passionate supporter and they had a great conversation they might be willing to do it again Cookie says, I walked up to a person who worked at a Walmart and told her how impressed, uh, how, how, how her, how impressed and thanked her and she was all smiles. So basically you saw her, you acknowledged her, you had her feel great and that made her day. It probably made your day too at the same time, Cookie. So ways to participate in development some more are telling a story painting a picture about the work you do. Tonight's session isn't about storytelling, though I do a lot of them, and some of you may have been on the live stream that I did earlier today um, talking about advanced storytelling, blending your money story with your people stories. But having a time that you share client stories or a client comes in and shares their story or uh, you have me go to a build site and meet some of the volunteers. Having me be able to have a little tool chest of stories that I can talk about, examples that I can talk about to the community is critical. And that's part of our job as uh, staff to make sure that we're connecting our board with real people whose stories make a difference. Later on, tonight or tomorrow or next week or whenever you have time, uh, I did a a video for a guy named Chris Davenport. He has something called Nonprofit Movie Mondays. And one of the Movie Mondays last year was me talking about board members and storytelling. And the story I share on there is about an organization that really embraced storytelling at the board level and the power of when board members were so invested in sharing stories that it caused large contributions to come in. Another way to participate in development is to help raise awareness by sharing updates about our campaign goal or our fundraising goal, explaining how a gift makes an impact, telling the money story of your organization, if you will. And the money story, I believe, is talking about what your funding gap is. The funding gap is a, a funky term that not a, a ton of people have heard before, or if you if you have, you might not even have known what it meant. And in my definition, it means what you project in expenses for the year, subtract away what you've received in the door to date. So not any um, tickets that are going to be sold for that upcoming event, not any grants that are pending. It's what have you received to date. And so Parker, I'd for sure ask you, because you've heard this term probably more than most people, um, for sure uh, Bridget has heard this term. What, what is the funding gap that some of you have? What, who knows what their funding gap is? And if you do, just type it in. I won't necessarily say what person. I won't attach a name to it. But I would like to know if you know it and what it is. So 125,000, nice, nice, quickly typed in there a student I can see in the class and that has to be raised by when 15,000 when is when do you have to close those gaps how quickly is it in the next three months is it by June 30th yeah so June 30th is what I figured for you most of you so you want to be talking about um, what that amount of money is that you have to raise and by when do you have to raise it so people get excited and participating, um, they see there's more to do, um, they actually have some tools to talk about your money story. So even breaking it down to, uh, you know, here's what it costs us in support on a build site for staff support and managing all the contributions, the in-kind contributions and the volunteer contributions, here's what it costs to do the build, not just put to, to get the, uh, uh, the materials, but here's what it costs as an organization to do that. So you're educating not only your board, but you're giving them a money story they can share with others. And then my final way to uh, participate in development without having to ask for money is to hold each other accountable. So what did I miss? What other ways could board members participate in fund development and raising awareness and engaging the community without having to ask for money because there's more I didn't there's not this the list isn't all encompassing what would you add to the list while I'm waiting for you to type in I will just recap the list for you I put it in a one pager for you so you can share this with um, the rest of your organization 
make a personal gift, invite others to give something, invite people into the organization, be a, a true ambassador and advocate, thank recent happy donors, participate actively in raising awareness, either tell a story or share, uh, it could be a people story or your uh, money story, and then hold each other accountable. Nice. So another way to participate is to uh, be in partnership with other community organizations. Uh, it could be um, bringing a connection from your, from my church or uh, some other area of my life into connection with Habitat through a volunteer experience. It could be uh, making sure that we understand the, the entire money story. So taking on how do we put that into a visual format for the organization to understand. So answer this question. Worksheet, second page, top side. Board members assist with and participate in fund development in which of the following ways? So one through six, yes or no? If you want to just go ahead and type in yes or no, or not type in, just um, answer on your sheet. And then again, tally your yeses or nos. So I know how many Ys you got and how many Ns you have. And I'm going to take you through a few resources and we'll talk a little bit about where to find board members, how to be clear about what we're looking for. How many yeses, how many nos? Looks like we've got four yeses, two no. A lot of four yeses, two nos. Okay, good. Interesting. Two yeses, four nos. We flipped it the other way. Four yeses, got it. Four seems to be one of our numbers. Anyone else? How many yeses, how many nos? Four yeses, two nos. So what does that tell you? What, what are we uncovering here? If you know that our board does four of those things and there's a couple things that they don't do, what is it? Looks like you're all in a 4-2 range. It's just sometimes it's a four yeses, sometimes it's four noes. What are we uncovering by talking about these areas of governance and, and participation? Um, these ways that board members uh, participate in fund development. They need to be more of the, aware of the gap number and, uh, and, and then have some language really to share it and work and, and then help work on it. Got it. What else? What else are you uncovering about this? Where did that worksheet come from, Chris? It was um, one of the attachments that came with the PowerPoint slides earlier today. So you should have it in the email from April. They need to be informed about who to thank and who to connect with. Exactly. Love that, Greg. One of the things that we wonder is, well, gosh, why isn't the board very engaged? Well, they don't necessarily know who to talk to. They might not know the language to say um, that we would like them to say. Um, it's all intentional and not accidental. Yeah. They, they actually have to be trained and taught. And I talk about myself as well. If I want to do something better, if I want to be really good at it, I do have to have some planning. I have to have some intention and thought around it. Otherwise, it's just sort of haphazard and it doesn't work so well. So let's talk about where do you find board members. Uh, it does take time, and that, that's a great comment, Bev. You, you, you know that making a shift in an organization to have people more engaged or to change what they used to be doing, that takes time. And I usually say transforming a board from wherever you are, wherever you have been, to where you want to go takes about a year, maybe two years, uh, depending on how many terms are in uh, are. are rolling over and uh, we, we bringing new people on it could even take up to three years now hopefully that's not daunting and overwhelming for you but it's exciting to know that you're in the process so where do you look for board members right now how do you how do you find them uh, what's what's the process would you just type into the question box for me what's the process that you go through to find board members out in your community and while you're typing in, while you're thinking about that and typing in, just a reminder that when you are looking for board members, when you are looking for new folks to serve on your board, 
Uh, you want to be clear about all the duties, the responsibilities, especially if they include helping with development activities. Uh, what are the rewards for participation? You want to let people know how they'll feel, how others will feel. Uh, you want to talk about what will happen when we have a fully engaged board and how quickly we'll close our funding gap, how many more houses we'll build. Okay, great, we've got some juicy stuff in here. So, a lot of you find your board members by word of mouth. People that you know in the community, um, you're assessing the gaps on your board, figuring out where our weaknesses are, and then we are looking to recruit board members who can fill those gaps. So, Stacy and Wes, what kind of gaps? What kind of gaps on your board do you look to fill? Is it an age gap? Is it a specific area of expertise gap? What is it? Uh, when, I, when I'm out and about uh, and I say I work for Habitat and people show an interest, I'd ask if they like to be involved. Okay, good. Word of mouth, call coworkers, look for someone who is knowledgeable in many areas. Uh, mostly a talent gap is look, what we're looking to fill. Um, we mostly have skilled contractors, that's where our board comes from. We're looking for different areas of experience, some diversity and some experience. Okay, so let me help you just a little bit. When you have slots to fill on your board and your uh, different committees, uh, this is a quick question. How many of you have an executive committee? You want to just type in a, yeah, a Y or an N for do you have a, an executive committee? Y or an N? Lots of you do. Okay, good. I'm going to wait for you all to pop in, populate, populate. All right. Yeses, yeses, yeses. Looks like just uh, maybe one of you doesn't. How many of you have a governance committee? Again, type in a Y or an N. Governance or like a nominating committee. Okay. Most of you do not. If you do not, um, then this job falls to the executive committee. Part of what I want to make sure that you understand is it is not everyone's job on the board to find new board members. If you've got some board members who are not showing up for meetings or um, not speaking up on a regular occasion and they sometimes are the ones who have recommendations, we now are building more of what we don't necessarily want to have. So you want to be very strategic, very planful about who are we looking for, uh, what is it that we want to have happen uh, on this board. And so while I love the idea that some of you are looking for very specific slots to fill, um, and you would probably do that maybe using a tool like this board matrix. Some of you have downloaded it from my, my website before. You've had it given to you at different sessions by me or others um, where the, um, the, the names of your board are there on the left-hand side. Let me just see if I can bring it up on my screen for you. Here we go so we can see it a little bit bigger. All right. So names of board members. Uh, affiliations, expertise, demographics, age range, fundraising, do they have any skills in major gifts, special events, grant writing, and then geographic area. So this is a nice board matrix to use, it's just fine, but I say only use it if you're answering these two questions. What are the three most important things for our board to accomplish this year, and that is answered by the board, and do we have the right people on the board to make that happen? These questions, number one is answered by the full board. Number two would be answered by your executive committee or your nominating committee. And then you would use this matrix to fill in the different slots. You want to have a nice diverse group in age and uh, support from across the community. Um, some who are board members who maybe are first time board members, other who have been board members a long time ago or, or for a long time in their lives. They have some wisdom around being a strategic board. Part of what happens, and uh, I think this is uh, a normal habit, but our job as staff especially and board leadership is to make sure this isn't the norm. Uh, what often happens is we look for people who are like ourselves. 
And if we have a whole bunch of type A people who are supercharged and, and getting involved and doing, you know, taking, taking the lead on everything, um, there's no followers, there's no doers. And vice versa, if we have a bunch of people who are a little bit quieter, um, just like to be told what to do, when to show up, where to go. We don't have any leaders who are jumping in to lead a subcommittee or uh, a special event committee or of some kind. So if I ask you, what are the, not even the top three things, because that's a lot to take on. What's one of the most important things for your board to accomplish this year? If you remember back to the list that I went through at the beginning of all the board duties and responsibilities, what what is at least one important function for your board to accomplish this year? Just type that into the question box. And this would be uh, not just from the, the personal perspective as a staff person, but really from looking at it from the board as a whole. What is it that they have to really focus on for your affiliate to be successful this year? Do you want to type into the question box? while you're doing that. All right, so um, some, some are saying recruit more board members. Yes, for some of them, probably not all of them. Uh, I don't believe that everybody's a good recruiter. Um, uh, using this tool does help a little bit. They have to do some strategic planning. They have to develop a clearer image, help us develop a clearer image in the community. So wear their boredness, I say, on their sleeve, eradicating our debt. Maybe. Um, their job isn't to eradicate it necessarily, Stacy. Their job is to actually ensure that we have the staff and or the systems and or uh, the financial information so that we can do that. So if we need to write more uh, grant proposals, if we need to have a second event, if we are going on some one-on-one -on -one asks, do we have a plan in place to support uh, making sure that we're eliminating our debt? develop a WOW fundraiser. So, and let me just go back to my list over here and see, and Wes, you are a board member. So, I'm not a fan of, what. Well, tell me this, how many, how many people, um, how many staff do you have, Wes, at your affiliate? You have a huge staff of how many? Two, yeah, that's kind of, I was going to say one or two. So, if that is uh, if that is necessary because you have a tiny staff and you truly have to increase the dollars for the organization, what I would encourage you to do is think outside the box on fundraisers. Fundraisers take a lot of time, a lot of dollars, and uh, they can be they can be uh, frustrating sometimes. So it might be that rather than having a fundraising event, the board's decision is to um, identify who some of the folks are in town that would be great sponsors of uh, a house build um, and set up some visits so that your CEO can go on visits to ask them for a gift. Um, accompanying the CEO, you don't have to ask for the gift, um, but you're opening the door. It might be um, thanking more of your donors so that the donors you have are giving 39% more next year. 40% increase in contributions is pretty high. Um, let's see, some of you others have said increased focus on fund development. So find some ways on that list of seven that you can, you can have the board you know, sort of take on. I'm going to say again what I said at the beginning, and that is I do not believe that board members have to be fundraisers. I do believe they have to be uh, involved with development, and that's raising money. Now, do you want me to sell tickets at an event? Okay, that's fine if you do. I might sell 10 or I might sell two, but I don't, not everybody's going to be good at that. Not everybody's going to get excited about that. I might be the person who gets really excited to make the thank you calls or to, uh, to make sure we've got the right people uh, sponsoring the event or I will open the door and bring some guests from my community. Um, recruit others and strategic planning is some other areas you guys are talking about. Increase community awareness, increase community involvement. You guys have focused on, I believe, the most important job of your board experience, and that is to be the best ambassadors about two things. 
who are you and why do you require additional funds not asking for them but just letting folks know we've got a waiting list of seven families in our community who desire just not even desire they they are hungry for affordable housing and there just simply isn't enough in our community so in order for us to provide all the affordable housing we have to build more homes and to build more homes means these things we have to have more volunteers to help on the builds and we actually have to have more cash the in-kind contributions a little bit easier to get but we actually have to have unrestricted operating dollars and let me tell you about a family whose life is different because we had enough unrestricted operating dollars to build their house last year now that is an example of being an ambassador that language and not necessarily having to ask for money. Greg says our board has to develop a way to get their story out to the people, the difference we make in um, their lives, secondary is work on our on funding our mission. Yep, they're totally related. They're they're kind of two halves of a whole, Greg. You've got it. All right, so moving on, uh, I have a couple of tools for you that are in the Dropbox folder. I'll show you the link for it again at the end and I know that April will probably send that link out to you but there's an application in the folder there's a couple of um, menus or board engagement forms in there but I want to talk a little bit about orientation so once you decide we need uh, two women and one man we need absolutely one of those three board members that are going to join us to um, have some financial background. Uh, we want one of them to have uh, some legal experience that they can be willing to share with us on occasion. And we want one of them to be um, really involved at a specific church that we've targeted as having a deeper partnership with. Now you've got, now you've got a, your, like your shopping list. So now you can put uh, a plan to how are we going to recruit those three profiles of board members from the community. Here's what I would tell you, and you may may or may not believe me, um, but Parker, I think you trust me enough to know that I would I would only say this if it were really true. Oftentimes, when the board isn't helping to do what we want them to do, it's because they don't know how. So if we break it down into bite-sized pieces, like let's use that matrix fill it out carefully uh, let's really have a conversation at our executive committee meeting bring them to the full board these are the slots we're looking to fill you are all on notice that we're looking to fill those kinds of slots we don't require anyone to uh, identify or go talk to someone to be a board member um, but do bring us names of people you think might fill these three categories uh, two women, one man, one banker, one lawyer, um, those specifics so that uh, and one at this church and then we'll put them into the mix. Um, hopefully then we've got two candidates for each seat so we can have a couple of those people serve on our committee level to try them on and see if they're really um, up to our, our quality board level that we've got going here. Your orientation process, I'm hoping you have one. Um, think about what it is. Does it help a board member come on board to join your board and feel like I know what I'm supposed to do? Does it have me uh, have answers to questions that I might be wondering about right away? Does it have me uh, understand programs and costs? Does it, does it serve me or is it just a process we go through because we know we have to and it's a little bit boring and um, we give them too much information. I don't know which category you might be in, the engaged or the little bit boring, but I have got uh, some thoughts on this as you can imagine. Uh, one of them is that it has to be just a one hour initial meeting. That your orientation process is actually uh, spliced out over time that you might have uh, two or three different times when you're doing some orientation but that initial meeting when we're onboarding more than one board member I, I always like it if we're bringing on more than one board member at a time so that orientation can feel like I've got a buddy uh, the second thing is and this is probably new for some of you is that the board chair runs the orientation 
It means the board chair has to know what are our expectations. It means the board chair has to know what are the areas that would be important to focus on. And it means that the board chair is then building in accountability from the first meeting. Absolutely, the executive director has a speaking role. They would talk about the funding gap. They would maybe share a story of uh, a, a family that has been served by Habitat or a, a project that you've just completed uh, that, or something about your restore that would excite me or that maybe I as board chair wouldn't know. Uh, but the, the, the way the, the unfolding happens is that meeting is led by a peer of that new board member. So they are knowing that this is an organization where, man, if I don't show up, somebody's going to notice. There's a different location for the orientation meeting. How, how perfect would it be if you were midway through a build and you could have that meeting towards the end of the workday when the crew was starting to clean up and uh, we could actually be on site wearing our hard hats with our folding chairs. We all walk in with a folding chair. We get to hear the story of the family who's going to move in there. And if that can't happen, maybe it's at a church location where you have your largest group of volunteers come from. Or it's at a company in town that supplies uh, some in-kind support and you have it in their conference room. But someone from that company comes and uh, says a little bit about why they are part of Habitat. So you're not only educating me about what it means to be a board member, you're giving me some outside, uh, looking outside into the community to see how the community supports our organization. There's a packet, for sure there's a packet. Um, one of the documents in the Dropbox folder, and again I'll show you the link to that folder in a little bit, is um, this document. I, I leave it, I believe it's in a, uh, a, a Word document, so you can edit it however you want to. But it's got, you know, the name, the address, preferred method of contact, when did the notices get sent telling them they were elected to the board, the dates of their term, um, what's the date of the next board meeting and or orientation. You fill this in for them so they know how to describe the organization. We are, fill in the blank, we specialize in serving and we help them to do what? Here's my process. It talks about just some of the things we just talked about. But on the top of page two, here's the packet information. Here's the thing. They don't need all of these sheets on the first day. Pick three or pick five, maximum five. Might be the, the mission. It might be the cheat sheet of jargon, the glossary of terms. It might be the org chart of the board and it might be the minutes from the most recent meeting. That, and, and maybe my board agreement, those are there, so there's four things there that I'm going to have in my packet and you're going to let me know you're going to populate that packet regularly over the next few months as I am invited to be at meetings and talk up and, and be a part of the board. So then you're not overwhelming them with all of the things that make my eyes glaze over. A couple of things to have happen is you want to immerse your mission into the meeting. So what I mean by that is just what I described. Have your meetings somewhere where I get to see or feel uh, why you exist. Maybe the board uh, orientation happens after we've done a drive around the community to show where the affordable housing is. Or you show me on a chart on the wall or a map on the wall, here are how many units we know that we have affordable housing in our community and here's what we can handle with our current size board and our current budget in building X number of homes per year. So you want to immerse your mission into each meeting that you have. I'd like it if your new board member was assigned a buddy, a board buddy, and they get a phone call from them welcoming them. They get a phone call after each board meeting. Those personal contacts uh, start, they, they continue uh, even through the first three months. So they, they don't just happen those first couple of months. They're my board buddy, hopefully forever, for our board experience together. There are things I might want to ask that person uh, that I might not want to say out loud at the board meeting. Okay, so just some feedback on the board orientation process. Same what you're doing right now, different from what you're doing right now. Took away some nuggets that are that would be helpful for you, just type into the question box. 
That was a lot of information about orientation. I want to move on to a couple other things, but I'm just looking for your feedback. Is Does this feel like what you are, a, a nice addition or a nice enhancement to what you're already doing? Or would it take something to, uh, to implement some of these things? While you're doing that, I'll just show you, um, there is a one uh, applica uh, not an application, an ga engagement menu. And there are actually three different engagement uh, documents in the Dropbox folder that you have access to. This one is an easy menu that you can fill in to be appropriate for your affiliate. Uh, appetizers, entrees, and desserts. It's an all-you-can-eat menu. You want people to circle as many items as they like, but at least one per category. So you're looking for that person to do things like make their own gift, um, attend a specific build date, um, forward emails or news clips featuring your organization to current and prospective donors. They get to choose what they want to do, but now we as staff or um, maybe there's a volunteer that helps tally the activities that support the engagement menu. All right, let's see. Got lots of ideas. These are great tips. Like the board buddy, we do. We could do more of these items. It's a good base for us to start from. Um, we want to implement, or we need to implement several of these ideas. Uh, it would take a little time. Absolutely, it's going to take time. Uh, having uh, a shift in any kind of structural change takes time. But think about, if I show up at the first meeting, I'm ready to go. I'm excited. You've asked me to serve on this board. I'm pretty proud that you asked me. And I show up and there's seven of 13 board members there. I am immediately taught something about accountability and attendance at your board meetings. No one says anything about the missing board members. Uh, no one has any idea where they are. Um, some of them RSVP'd and they just haven't showed up. Uh, and we don't really talk about, will someone follow up with them afterwards? So I'm wondering, is this sort of a show up as you want to kind of board? The second meeting I show up and now there's 10 out of 13, which is great, but gosh, there's still two. Um, and uh, three that, that didn't show up and they're the same three that didn't show up last time. So now I'm wondering, okay, does are they just not around or that you're building some sort of rep, uh, repeatable behavior by me, new board member. I love what you just said, Bev. I remember being overwhelmed and no one called me and I didn't quite know what to ask. I've been there. Having a board buddy can help that a lot. Also, what kind of data, what kind of information we share. So I'm going to go through this bit of, there's, there's a lot of visuals here to share with you. So I'll go through it a little bit quickly. We talked about what your funding gap is, but making sure that it's clear for your board to understand. It might mean giving me some sort of visual display. You, you've already shared with me what your funding gap is this year. So just a reminder, when you're talking about what the money story is at our organization, here's the pyramid about taking your board through why we have to do it. Um, so we have to talk about why we exist. There's something missing, like affordable housing. Um, there's something missing that causes us to have our restore. There's something missing that causes us to have our brush with kindness programs. So we have to be doing this work. And to do this work, it actually takes dollars. And we have a funding gap every single year until we don't. So let me tell you about the one in the brush with kindness program. But in that program, let me tell you about Millie. She's the woman that stands out for me, who she, she just has a grin that goes from uh, one side of the state of Minnesota to the other because of the new screens and the new storm windows we put on her house. And that cost our organization an investment from the community of about $1,000. It wasn't that expensive. It will save her over $300 in her um, heating and um, her, her energy bills every single month. Well worth the investment over time. So you've got a, a message pyramid to follow to explain to people on your board or in your community why is it we actually have this money story to tell and let me tell you our money story. 
I'm hoping that you're seeing that one of the most taken for granted and important components of what we do is the conversation, uh, the communication around money and people, money and people. So we want to put some training into your organizations about that. Building an accountability takes some conversation, takes some talking about having accountability. In order to have accountability, you have to measure things. You have to measure who was at our meeting, who wasn't at our meeting. How, how you decide what you're going to measure is by having a discussion at first that executive committee level, maybe at a committee level, or at a full board meeting. What is it, taking maybe that menu, that uh, board menu that I showed you, what is it that you would like to be measuring as a board about yourselves, about your own activity? Let's pick the top three or five things and how will those support the top three things you said we need to be doing as a board this year? Accountability is one simple thing. It's just being held responsible for our actions. Accountability is our own personal accountability and it's also an organizational accountability. So I believe as staff we support our board, especially our board chair, in having all the information and the data that he or she needs to run nice, efficient, timely, thorough board meetings. And as board members, our accountability is to do what we said we'd do when we signed that board agreement. We'd show up, we'd make a gift, we'd volunteer on committees, we would hold our, our peers accountable, and we would say the tough things because our job is to govern and lead this organization. But that's got to be modeled by some of the, us old timers who've been around for a while. To have accountability really work, you have to have clear expectations prepare people to meet those expectations, like attending a session like this. So thank you for so many of you being board members who are here tonight. Monitor performance and then attach consequences like a good thing. What's the good thing that happens when we all do what we said we'll do? We build more houses, we have more visibility in the community, and you feel better and more engaged as a board member. Hang on, sorry, I'm going to clear my throat. Okay, thank you so much. Been talking a lot today. And the voice is getting ready to, to not talk anymore. So what information do you need to share with your board to have them really shine? Just type into the question box for a moment. What is it that you think board members need to know? What kind of data? What kind of information do they need to know? How what what do they have to know to be a great board member? Those of you who are board members. What do you want to know more of? Just type in what your thoughts are right into the question box there. What's the information that you must know to serve even better? You're typing, typing, typing. All right, we need to know more positive Partner family stories. All right. And how are you going to get those? Where are you going to find them, Car Carly? Um, accountability is a good thing. It's a good kick in the butt for all of us. Love it. Love how you said that, Bev. Uh, we need to know what the mission is and the information, uh, information about how, how you understand the mission even. So um, figure out how will we get that sort of information to you. We need to know the number of applicant inquiries. How many grants are we receiving? The impact of our mission on the community. Great questions. These are perfect questions to ask your staff, your board chair, to be asking at board meetings. This is an example of a dashboard that I love. It's easy to follow. You can Google Blue Avocado Nonprofit Dashboard and Signal Light for Boards. It shows, they've got about nine areas that they show on their dashboard. Um, the first is finance. <clears throat> they show very clearly their target is to have 45 days of unrestricted cash on hand and it's attached to the financials, their dashboard. So I can see all the spreadsheets behind it, but this is what's on top. Six months ago we had 65 days of uh, worth of cash on hand. Today we have 18. Our conversation tonight will be what is it that we need to do to support the staff? 
or what is it that we must take on as a board to make sure we have more unrestricted cash on hand. So the red is we got to act on it. The yellow is oh, we got to watch this. And the green is we're, we're in good shape. We can celebrate. This organization wanted to have 100 new donors this year. Six months ago they had 11. Now they have 82. It's a nice measuring tool for me. You also want to show some information about your donor data. I love this uh, two next charts. This is the contributions for this organization are less than $100,000. These come from individuals, family foundations and individuals. Uh, this was not the full fiscal year for this organization. They, they gave me this report in about October. Um, but they broke it down by category. How many $10,000 gifts? How many $1,000 gifts? How many $100 gifts? So they did it by dollar category and then they did it by number of donors in each category. So when we're talking about how many board members to be making thank you calls, well, if we want to call the top 100 people or the top donors who give $100 and above, we're talking about less than 100 people. This is a little bit more this year, so 90, 100, 115, 118 people to be thanked throughout the course of 12 months. Doable, and it can increase our dollars by 39% on average. Donor retention versus acquisition. How many of your donors are sticking around? If the national average is 39%, is yours less or more? Now this might require some, someone on your finance committee, a, a volunteer, or a volunteer and a staff person to help figure out these numbers, but these tell a story. You want to measure your own activity. So this is an organization that measures the board giving, $100 and under giving, and then $100 and above giving. So they get to see what the board category, what, what the percentage even is of board giving each year. Some of you have seen this chart before. It's a really powerful tool for keeping track of, in this category up here in the left quadrant, it's uh, it's um, participation attendance. They look for 80% attendance at committee meetings and at board meetings. They ask the board to make 100 contacts together, combined, a year. So uh, bringing in 100 new people, and if you've got 13 or 15 board members, that's not a lot per person. They keep track of what has been given versus what's been pledged each year. The board agreed at the beginning of the year to have 45 visibility participating events. That might be I invite someone from the Habitat board or staff to come and talk at my office over lunch, a lunch and learn of some kind. This was done in February, so they were pretty low, but they usually each year close that out ahead of 45. And then they picked four events that they wanted 80% of the board to be attending. You couldn't miss them all. You, you got an opportunity to pick which one you were going to miss. Uh, but they, they tracked this and it was updated for each board meeting. So these are just some visuals to give you an idea of what could you be measuring, what are you measuring. Um, decide together though what it is you want to be looking at on a dashboard each time and have some discussion about well what does it mean if we're not fulfilling what we said we do. That's part of what's often missing from a board meeting, I find, is we, we just report out on what's so, but we don't necessarily talk about, so if we don't make good on our promises and the activities that we said we'd be doing, what will happen to this affiliate? What will happen to those families that are waiting for a home? Powerful contributions happen when people are in touch with their purpose, their vision, and the difference they make. So we have to tell stories, connect people to the costs, and have it feel like my time invested, as well as my dollars, are making a difference. So get your worksheet out. It's time for your pop quiz. You're going to answer quick questions, yes or no. Number one question, the board signs an annual board agreement that clearly spells out what the expectations are for participation other than attending meetings, yes or no. To circle right on your worksheet there, and then you can tally up your yes and, and, and no's for me. Our board members know we're expected to assist with development efforts. I didn't say you are doing that. Maybe some of you are and some of you aren't, but our board members know that we're expected to. I'm certain our staff, if we have staff, provide our board with committee, our board and committee members with great data so we can be great board members. Yes or no. 
100% of our board members make an annual financial gift, yes or no? Our board members regularly share compelling stories about the families impacted by our work, yes or no? Our board members regularly understand and share our funding gap with others, yes or no? And our board conducts an annual self-assessment to measure board effectiveness, yes or no? All right. So in the question box, just tally up your yeses and nos again from your pop quiz there. We had seven questions, so how many yeses and how many nos? Take a moment, just type in your yeses and nos so I can see them. Two yeses, one yes, two yeses. We're on the slow end of the yeses. We've got some work to do, but we've got room for improvement, right? So then what I would like you to do is, well, I'll get to the worksheet, the other worksheet in a moment. Think about, and these are questions to ask as you go back to your organization, but also just to think about tonight, what would a successful and fully engaged board look like? Make a list at the next board meeting. What would it look like if we were all fully engaged? What would be, what would we not settle for? And what do we want board members to do more of? or less of. So it looks like most of you are in the two to three range for yeses. I've got one four, good for you, um, but a lot of two to threes in the, um, in the yes range. Our job as board leadership and staff is to provide our team with tools and information that can support the organization with ease. So moving forward, just uh, put on your, on your uh, your questionnaire, your worksheet, or type into the question box because I'd actually like to see it. What's something that you learned and what's something that you're going to change to create an even more effective board? So what's something that you learned tonight and then something that you'll change and then I've got an action tool that I'd like to share with you before you go so don't go away yet. But type into the question box something that you learned and something that you'll change, or at least you'll, you'll have a discussion about changing. Stacy says, uh, we need to be assessing ourselves and providing our director with better tools and support. We have to have some strategic recruitment and board orientation. Love it, Pat. High five, air high five to you. Strategic recruitment, I love that term. Use some of the forms in the Dropbox folder to, to just put some structure to what we're already doing nice. I mean, you're doing good work. You wouldn't be here if you weren't doing good work. And my job, I believe, is to have you enhance what you're doing so that it's even at a higher level. So keep typing into the box here. What is it that you learned um, and what is it that you'll change? And I want to share with you page three of the worksheet. So that questionnaire that you have was two pages, right? Two sides of a questionnaire. But then the third page is a worksheet. And that worksheet, let me make it a little smaller for you so you can see it full screen here. What will you personally do to be an even more effective board member? You would want to bring this to a board meeting. What steps do we need to take and by when? Maybe this comes, to you, uh, comes with you to a retreat after you've taken your board through some of these questions and you have this document filled out a couple of times in a row. Uh, I didn't leave a place on here for names, though you can certainly add it. Uh, you can have it be anonymous or not. It can be my own personal take-home sheet that I, uh, that I report out on. But you want to have some sort of tangible place I put my action. So let me read some more. You've got we want to do phone calls rather than letters, more thanking that way. Uh, I want to hold the board accountable, and Linda is a board member, so you get, you get full-on permission to do that. Learn how to use the tools we provided and how to incorporate them. Great. We need to provide consistent information, especially about our first-time donors, even our repeat donors, and have the board start to thank some of those major donors. Look for more specific family stories to share. Love it. Ask board members to sign an annual task assignment pledge. I would call it an engagement agreement uh, versus a task assignment pledge because, Parker, one of the things you said is you want them to be less involved in the day-to-day -day workings. So 
You want them to not think they have to do tasks that are about, uh, you know, the ongoing operations, but they're doing board engagement things. We'll change our thought process on board recruitment and training. Uh, definitely, we'll be making some thank you calls. I want to model and be an example of how we want our board to operate. We need to do board orientation and change uh, from fundraising to development. Ooh, you guys are making my heart sing here tonight. That's what I have for you. Stay in touch with me if you would. Tell me your good news and your stories. Um, you can be a part of my e-news community. E-newsletters come out the first Thursday of the month. Uh, I've got a Facebook page where I put coaching tips. Uh, I've got a blog that comes out each week. Today, if you go to my blog on my website, you can click on uh, to see some information that we talked about here about funding gap. And um, there is a, a, a live session I did today on Funding Gap, and that live session is available for review on the link that is in my blog post. So I did a 90-minute session just on talking about how to blend your money stories and your people stories. And you could have other folks in your organization view that if you would like. All right, questions, comments. Maybe invite a homeowner to our annual meeting. Yes, Stacy, that's perfect, and have them tell their story. Is there any other thoughts or questions or April, do you want to jump in here? Can I just, I just want to give a quick poll to find out if anybody had more than one person uh, participating with them today. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Part of it is you have to report back, right, to your funder. Exactly. I like how many people, how many people yeah. are participating. So I just launched a, a poll just to see who... Sometimes people gather around one computer with more than one person. So yeah, I'm seeing some of that come through here. So that's really helpful for me to know. You guys were awesome. Totally engaged. Made my day with how engaged you are, especially at this late of time in the day. So love, love, love it. It was really fantastic. Thank you all for being amazing. I've been thrilled just listening. I thought there was just so so many great things to say. I really hope that some of you, I know a lot of you are already signed up for our conference coming up in, a, in less than two weeks now or about two weeks uh, in Wilmer. I just posted that link and I'll include that in the follow-up information as well. But if you haven't thought about it, it's really, there are a lot of a lot of it is geared again towards our board members. We're really trying to focus on that. And it includes a pre-conference session on board recruitment uh, with Lori. So it's all included. We'll go a little deeper into the conversations that we had tonight. <clears throat> the other thing is that link to the Dropbox folder is right here on the screen. Just remember it is case sensitive and I know April will be sending it out to you all. Mm -hmm. Yay, thank you everybody. Excellent. All right. Thanks, everybody. And I will, I'll just send those links again, um, just in case you missed it beforehand. And then um, I'll include the registration information as well. Have a great night. Thank you so much, April. Thank you.